Hey, this is Rob Houston. Beautiful day here in Enid, Oklahoma. But again, we are maintaining social distancing. So I thought we'd take another driving tour of Enid today and got to thinking, what can we drive around and show you? And we have so much unique architecture here in Enid that I thought we would hit five different locations that show off Enid's unique architecture and give you a little history lesson as well. So come on, let's go. Chances are, if you've driven anywhere in Enid, you've driven by the corner of Van Buren and Garriott, our two major intersections, Highway 412 and 81, and just a block or two off of that is what people know around here as the Champlin Mansion. And it is uh, located just off of Van Buren and Garriott. There's Champlin Park right uh, in front of it, but uh, this was built back in 1939 as H.H. Uh, Champlin uh, built his dream mansion and he didn't get to live in it until he was like 70 years old. And unfortunately, he only lived for about another five years before he passed away. But uh, the Champlin Mansion for the longest time was still uh, owned by and lived in by members of the Champlin family. And the, the neat thing about this, uh, it's the most elaborate example of a Tudor revival residential architecture. Uh, it was a very popular style in the United States from the 1890s till the end of the 1930s. And again, this house was built in 1939. It's a two and a half story sandstone structure with almost 23,000 square feet of living space. And of course, the history of Mr. Champlin was that they, uh, the family moved here shortly after the land run of 1893. He opened the first national bank in downtown Enid in 1902, and then started Champlin Refinery Company in, in 1916. Again, Tudor Revival Residence Architecture, and it's on the National Register of Historic Places. We're driving down West Broadway right now. We're going to come across one of the most iconic homes in Enid. It is the McChristy Knox Mansion, one of the most magnificent houses in all of Enid. It was built for Joseph McChristy, who at the time, back in 1909, was the president of the Enid Mill and Grain Company. And it's a three-story mansion. Neoclassical is the architectural style that we have on this piece. The things that you notice about this are the four main columns right there as you uh, walk up to the front door and then all the columns that are around it that kind of go around the porch. That porch completely wraps around about two thirds of each side and then the entire front of the house. Truly one of the houses uh, for the upper class in Enid back in the uh, late 1900s, early 1910s. We're in downtown Enid. We're gonna go by a couple of uh, very unique architectural style buildings. Uh, the first one is here as I look out to my left. It is the Security National Bank building at the corner of Broadway and Independence. This is a flat roofed two story modern movement international style building that represents many of the, uh, the character defining elements of that style that was very popular in that post-depression, post-World War II era of uh, the late 40s into the uh, 50s and even into the early 60s. They built it in a, in a little different style because a lot of the banks pre-depression era were built in kind of the same style, so they wanted to get away from that because psychologically they thought, well, if they're going into a bank that was like it was back in the you know, 1920s and 30s, that, well, maybe that's gonna collapse too. So we had to come up with a completely different style for our banks. And so you saw a lot of banks built in that late 1950s, early 1960s era in that uh, modern movement international style. Security National Bank, uh, the interior is still the same as it was uh, when it was built in 1962, they've kept that same footprint on the inside. And it's, uh, again, part of the National Register of Historic Places. 
We're coming up on the public library of Enid and Garfield County. It was built in 1964, and it is the only example in Enid of the new formation style of modern architecture. This library replaced the Carnegie Library that had been built in 1910, but it had been condemned by the fire marshal in 1957. And then for seven years or so, there was a lot of uh, going back and forth and trying to get the new library built. The site is the original land run office site, so very historic location in Enid. And it's also a literary landmark honoring Marquis James, Pulitzer Prize winning author, moved to Enid when he was two. His family came during the land run and they lived basically right across the street from this site. So very important corner and uh, block in the history of Enid. And again, it's on the National Register of Historic Places, the public library of Enid and Garfield County. This next building is one of the most unique buildings in all of Enid. It's abandoned right now, but it's still on the National Register of Historic Places. It's called Babe's Package Store, and it was built right around the time of the end of state prohibition in late 1959. It's a unique style of architecture known as Googie architecture. You hear of Google today, but this is Googie architecture. It was basically the late 1950s, early 1960s, the space age, space era type of modern architecture. It has no right angles in the building whatsoever. There's like eight walls, but none of them face each other. It's just a very odd style. Uh, you see the butterfly type of roof that's, uh, that is on the building and just very unique. It was uh, run as a liquor store from 1959, one of Enid's first, not the first, but one of the first. And it ran as a liquor store until 1968. And then it turned into a, a loan building where you could, people could go and, and get loans on their money and uh, stayed that way for a number of years. It's been closed since the late 1990s, still though in really, really good shape. And again, listed on the National Register of Historic Places for its googie architectural design. It's called Babe's Package Store. And that's a quick look at some of our unique architecture in Enid. And again, these five spots that we just went to are all on the National Register of Historic Places. There are actually 32 different places in Garfield County that are on the National Register, including 26 within the city limits of Enid. And you can check out uh, visitenid.org as we have the list of all of those locations on the National Register of Historic Places, as well as the backstories behind them and why they were named to the National Register. So go again to our website, visitenid.org, and check out that list of the National Register of Historic Places. and. We'll see you next time.